You know, because like some people are just, they have energy. Like what is energy? Like I always think of that. Like I switched to, uh, back to uh, the carnivore diet. You uh-huh. know, um, I go back and forth on that. And for the most part, I eat mo- mostly meat and fruit. And some vegetables. That's like most of my diet. Occasionally, I go crazy. Like we were in the Bronx, we went to this Italian deli and mm. these giant sandwiches it was amazing. But that's a rare deviation of oh, my yeah. path. But I had this moment. Um, I guess it was about two weeks ago, mm-hmm. where I was like, you know what? Um, the best I ever felt, like literally the best I ever felt all throughout the day, was when I was on the carnivore diet. Let me go back to that. Let me see what that's like. And one of the things that I saw, like immediately. Uh, for seven, eight days, I ate nothing but meat and eggs and fat and bacon and nothing else. I mean, nothing. I was real strict. And th- my brain was working so much better. It was weird. Like, I wasn't searching for, like, it was like I had more access to my ability to form sentences. To mm-hmm. I was thinking clearer. It was like, it was more effortless to have conversations. And I was like, this is interesting. This is very interesting because this is not how I normally feel. This is like me at my optimum, but I'm able to sustain this multiple days in a row. And I think that a lot of the foods that we eat, foods that have preservatives, a lot of bread and bullshit and just shitty food, your body uses so much resources to process that and it's not real food. It's kind of bad for you, right? And so your body is just like overburdened with this extra work. When you eat clean, like really, I'm eating, mm-hmm. you know, wild game and fat and beef tallow and all that and eggs. Your body doesn't have any bullshit to process. So your body is less inflammation. You have less inflammation mm-hmm. y- and you're operating off of ketones essentially for the most part because you're, your body is entering into a ketogenic state. You have just, it just it's, you just feel like even through the whole day. I, didn't, I never felt like a, like at the end of the day, like, oh, boy, I'm tired. There was none of that. It was just So that's flat. mostly on the keto diet. Well, it's carnivore. Carnivore diet. But, but carnivore, you, you must reach pa- uh, periods of ketosis. There's a, a pro- process called uh, gluconeogenesis, I believe it is. See if that's correct. And I think that what that is is when your body consumes only protein, your body will convert some of that protein into glucose. Mm. And that actually can knock you out of a ketogenic state if you eat too much protein. But hmm. but when you eat like that, um, I mean, everybody's different, clearly. I know people that function very well on a vegetarian diet. Yeah. Not for me, dude. I like me. A lunch of Yeah, this. gluconeogenesis, take you out of ketosis. A widespread fear surrounding keto is that consuming too much protein may lead to the upregulation of a process called gluconeogenesis mm. and throw you out of ketosis, undoing all your hard work. The truth is, gluconeogenesis is essential for our overall health and actually allows us to remain in ketosis. Oh, mm. okay, so it's good. So whatever that is. That's how I function at my best. So that's how I eat now. Like last night when Dave brought the pizza backstage, it looked good. What'd you do? I wanted a piece. I was like, I'm not eating it. Did you leave the room or anything? Or what were some of your methods you used to stay away from it? I don't really, I don't have to do that. I just go, no, just not eating it. Did you do a gum or anything to keep yourself busy? No, 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 no. I wasn't even itchy. I wasn't itchy. You know, if I had a couple of cocktails in me, though, I probably would have grabbed a slice. Oh, fuck yeah, boy. That's the problem. A couple of, co- couple of tequilas. Oh, yeah. Next thing you know, I want some pizza. Oh, dude, I'll fucking. Yeah. I'll do whatever after that, boy. But I think Little I'm. Tequila. I think I'm done. I, I lost five pounds in two weeks. And not not anything but fat. Just like, just immediately, my body just went. Shriveled up. Do you have some fitness goals? Like at this point in your life, you've kind of been through fitness a lot. It's been a big part of your life. Does some of your fitness goals kind of change as you as we get a little bit older? Do you think? Not for me. No, yeah. no. Because with uh, hormone replacement and all the stuff that I do, even at fifty five, my body functions essentially the same way it did when I was thirty. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I have no problem doing hard workouts, and kettlebells, heavy bag workout, jujitsu. Injuries are an issue, you know, with me. Like, I just tweaked my back muscle the other day doing some deadlifts, but nothing serious. But um, but as far as, like, goal, fitness goals, is just to maintain this. Yeah. Like, I, I know I have a, an extraordinary level of fitness for my age, and I just maintain that. And I think that if you can maintain it, that's the key. The real problem with people is they get out of shape, and then getting back in shape is very hard. 
it's a fucking grind. Yeah. It's a grind. And for me, for my mental health, man, I am not the same person if I don't exercise. You know, with that whole thing with like- 100%. The frequencies. 